So this is a 500 gram scale, except when they're this precise and expensive, you can't call them a scale, you have to call them an analytical balance. This is a Joan Lab 500 gram analytical balance, and it is accurate to a thousandth of a gram or a milligram. I was sent this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, it would cost you about $280. All right, so it's packaged in styrofoam. On the top, you get the manual. So the styrofoam is loose in the box, and it has some handles on it, so you can pick it up and pull it out of the box pretty easily. And I do recommend keeping the packaging material in case you ever need to move or store this guy. So in the accessory box, they include a calibration weight, the weighing table that goes in there, and an AC adapter. So this calibration weight says M1 and it has a 500G on it. Now the scale on the side here has an RS-232 interface. There's also a USB port, and this is kind of the older USB style um, B connector, which is kind of the old style square printer port cables, um, and that's the power supply in. Now there is also on the bottom a battery compartment, so you can run this scale off of four AA batteries if you'd like. Um, you might notice that each of these feet have little knobs on them, and so you can spin the feet to level the scale. Um, so if your table is not level, you may need to level the scale. Now, it is an enclosed scale because a little bit of air current can affect this guy, um, and it has three sliding windows, um, and they're held closed with this tape for shipping. So you can slide the top window back, or you can access the um, weighing stage using either of these side windows. And the sliding motion is not super smooth. It's basically just within a couple of notches. And you have to keep the up and down parallel appropriately um, because if it tilts backwards under its weight, it kind of jams. So you have to kind of put a little bit of forward pressure on the top of this so it slides easily. The top one's a little easier to slide. Now an interesting feature of this scale is that it has a display on the back so you can read the display while working on the opposite side of the scale. So this little uh, balance area here basically just is a piece of it. it looks like a stamped aluminum with a kind of a stand on the bottom of it and it has it looks like a vinyl wrap you know there's some edges here that are a little bit teary still um, with you know white vinyl on the top of this thing so I'm ripping some of these off and I don't know if it's going to auto calibrate to the new weight here or how that's going to work Alright, so I've plugged it in, turned it on. There's a whole bunch of dashes, and then it went to a whole bunch of zeros. So we're going to put this little twisty tie that it was holding the power cord together on it. And according to this scale, that is 0.296 grams. So basically a third of a gram, or a little under a third of a gram. So a scale like this with this much accuracy is typically used in chemistry labs or jewelers to measure small amounts of gold, for example. Let me go ahead and put this 500 gram weight on that they have thoughtfully provided. So this guy here says 500.136. So that .136 might be oils from my finger, might be the scale slightly miscalibrated. Um, so there is a calibration procedure that uses this 500 gram weight reference weight. Now 
Now right now it's at 0 0.15, so it's not teared or calibrated. So I'm going to hit the tear button, and now it's going to uh, 0. All right, so for the calibration procedure, we remove everything from the balance platform. We press this for three seconds. And it says calibration, and it says, hey, I want a 500 gram weight. So we place the 500 gram weight arm to it, and it thinks about things for a while. And now it says, okay, that is 500 grams, exactly, 0 0.000. Then we remove the weight. It thinks about it some more. And now it's at zero grams. So let's put this guy back on and see what it says now. So it's still 0 0.296. So it looks like, well, 296 to 297. So maybe it changed the lower end a little bit. Looks like it might have mostly calibrated the upper end. All right, so to demonstrate the accuracy of a thousandth of a gram balance, I have here a standard candle. We're going to place the candle in there. And it weighs currently 58.309 grams. probably see where I'm heading with this. All right. I am going to burn this candle for exactly 20 seconds. So that's been 10 seconds. And here we're coming up on 20 seconds. So you can see that smoke coming off. Those are particles escaping. All right, so now we put the candle after it's been burnt for 20 seconds on. And it is 58.280 grams now, or maybe 58.281, depending on how I walk around the table. All right, so 20 seconds of burning this candle is somewhere between 28 and 29 thousandth of a gram worth of wax that has been burnt. So essentially, if I burnt this candle for about one or two seconds, we could have seen a change. Now it also has a count by weight mode. So you hit the pieces um, button and it says, hey, put 10 pieces on the scale. So you do have to count 10 initially. Then you press pieces again, thinks about it a little bit, and it says, oh, there's 10 on the scale right now. So if I put another one, it says, oh, actually, it's 11 now. And so if I were to take this whole box of screws and put them on the scale, there's like 94 there except for these two that I have dropped off the edge. Now in case you're wondering, hey, why is there this sliding window or why is there glass around the whole thing? When you blow on it, the weight changes. So if you have an air conditioner vent nearby or anything like that, um, or just people walking by, or anything that makes air movements, um, this glass protects it from those air movements. Now it does appear that there's a QC pass sticker, and I think that's on top of a protective film here. Um, I believe this is a protective film that you're supposed to remove. It has a wrinkle in it, so I'm pretty sure it's not just part of this scale. Um, but there's not like an easy to grasp there we go. 
So there's the protective film. And underneath the protective film, underneath the QC sticker, is this bubble level. So I haven't actually leveled it, but my table happens to be pretty level. Um, but you can adjust these guys to make sure that bubble level is perfectly centered into the center of the ring in there. So the controls are only on the front, but I do appreciate the fact that there's a duplicate readout on the back. So that's good if you're like in a uh, chemistry lab where it's a, a college or a high school where it's a teaching environment where you know multiple people have to see this at once, or just if you're working from different sides of a table. Now I have not tested the output on the USB and the RS-232 ports. Um, there is a calibration button thing you can do to change the baud rate on the RS-232 port, uh, but my understanding is basically it just outputs the current weight. So it worked perfectly on the little screws. With these super tiny beads, it was off by one. To put that in perspective, let's see how much one bead weighs. I'll remove some of the uh, wind as well. So it looks like a bead weighs one one hundredth of a gram. Now I just generally love being able to measure things very precisely and accurately. Um, so this is a really cool scale. Do I need to measure many things this precisely and accurately? Well, probably not. But if you do, this guy is probably going to be just what you need.